the, Can I have uh, a question real quick? Other thing we'd like to have. Uh, my name's Jan, if, if I may. I have a hearing disability, so if, if you have a video, you can bring it up and you're talking. It helps I can see your face and read your lips. So, thank you. I, I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you with that. Could you say it again? I'm sorry. Um, I, my name is Jan, and um, I have a hearing disability. So I have a special Bluetooth, and I'm just reminding everyone to, to speak up, and if you can, if you have your video available, I, I do better reading, reading lips, speech reading. Okay. So okay. just sharing that information. Good, Thank you. Good to know. Right. Thank you. Thanks, good Jan. to be here. I'll make sure to speak up. Okay. The other thing we'd ask you to do is when you're not speaking, please keep your mute or your uh, mic muted so we don't end up with background noise we didn't need. Uh, if you're unfamiliar with it, at the bottom of your screen, if you break your mouse clear to the bottom, you'll see a pop-up menu, and that gives you a couple of things. It gives you several things. If you click on the, the one that says Manage Participants, you can click on that, and you can see who's on the line and uh, who's speaking at the uh, particular time. You also have the opportunity with that um, participants to, uh, once you do that, you'll be able to see at the bottom the ability to raise your hand if you'd like to, to speak and be acknowledged, you can do that. Uh, and that's something we'd use at the end here when, uh, when we have questions or even in the, in the interim time, if you have something, I'll be watching for that alert, uh, Doug, that there's a question to be, to be asked and, uh, and answered. Uh, lastly, there's one other area on here I'd like to have you see at that bottom menu. You'll see something that says reactions. You can click on that and you get the opportunity to give a thumbs up or applaud and uh, recognize or, and give a little feedback to, uh, to Doug on what he's doing. So with that, uh, I'm going to turn it over to Doug and thank Doug for, for taking the, uh, the time to present this and prepare for it. Uh, Doug always does a great job with these fast starts and it's something that's really valuable. Uh, I, I hope that uh, you'll enjoy it as much as I know I will. The nice thing is we're going to have this uh, uh, up on our web. That's the reason it's being recorded. So others will be able to see it and you'll be able to review the materials that uh, you're not quite, don't quite remember what you what were told before you get a chance to replay it. So with that, I'm going to turn it back over to Doug. Good evening, everyone. I hope uh, everyone is staying safe. Uh, first, I'd like to give a public announcement for all of those who are out there uh, doing and the, the Lord's work on the front lines, uh, first responders, physicians. I know we have a physician here, a shop member, Ryan Sanzo, is a radiologist. I know he's working hard to help everyone. So I hope everyone stays safe and thank you for everything that you do out there for Tell what's going on. first responders. So if I stop, it's because the helo is going overhead and it's not that I'm quitting. Okay, welcome to another edition of Doug's Doing Hand Tools. Um, so we're going to go over some different tools tonight. This is mostly about measuring and layout for tools. So we're going to go over everything that you see laid out here. I'm kind of going to give you a quick overview of what each one does. Obviously, the first thing you want is a good pencil. Okay, uh, number two H or an H pencil leaves a good line on most woods, except maybe the darker woods like walnut. And there I recommend keeping a white pencil so you can do your good layout lines that you can see to cut and trim to. Okay, obviously one of the first ones we want to go over is the tape measure. So having a quality tape measure to lay out your measurements is really instrumental. It's always good to, to have one with a lot, um, and that way you can not worry about it rolling up as you lay out your measurements. Oh, before I go, most tools on this bench are under $20. So it doesn't cost a lot to get into some good layout tools. Okay. Um, one of the other tools that I like that I have laying around in my shop are these edge rulers. So if you can see here, they are marked out in increments of up to a 32nd of an inch. But what I like about it is 
I can lay them right alongside my material and I can lay this out with the very precise measurements. Um, these come from Woodpecker. They're a manufacturer of a, a lot of quality tools. Um, they go from six inches, this one, uh, all the way up, this is a 12 inch, and they go all the way to 48 inch uh, length. They're really quality uh, aluminum anodized tools, and I like to use them in my shop because I can do some really precise layout work when I do that. Okay, so one of the other things that I like is a set of just plastic squares. Um, I have a 45 angle, a 45 angle, and a 30 60 angle. I got these at Hobby Lobby. They're only like six dollars a piece. This is a 12 inch. This is an eight inch. They're very, they're really quality tools. I use them for a lot of my angle layouts. So all I would have to do uh, is come up, make this flush with the edge. I want to do a 45. I just go along here and I do my 45. Or if I want to do my 60, I come up and align my edge with the, with the edge of the surface that I want to reference from for my, for my angle. And then I come up and I just do simple like that. Um, very practical tools. You'll find that you'll use your triangles a lot in your layout. Okay, so one of the other basic tools that we go over uh, for measurements are the uh, tri square. So this is a very precise instrument that we can make very defined marks with layout distances. So this is a four inch here and it's divided up to 60 fourths of an inch. So if I were to do a quarter inch, I would come and set it at my quarter inch mark right here. Okay. Do a quarter inch first. And then I could go and lay out my quarter inch mark this way. Okay. And I would have a reference that I could do a quarter inch. Let's say I was laying out at a mortise joint. I could go like that for my offset. Or what I could also do is, I'm going to have to lay this down here. If I wanted to make a line all the way across my board, I could pull my square like this, pull my pencil against the square, and I could come across like this and make my line. It's a little harder to stand it up, but you get the gist of what I'm trying to do, uh, laying a pencil line or a reference line from the surface of my, at the edge of the board all the way across. One of the other tools that you'll find useful is a French curve. So if I want to make a very unique, uh, undefined or non-conventional curve, I should say, I could use my French curve and I could put it at a reference point and I could come around like this, as long as you don't mess it up like I just did come across like this. And I can make a very sweeping curve with my French square. And they have different sizes and different curvatures of these. Again, I get this at Hobby Lobby and they're like $6 for the small one. And they go up to $12 for the big uh, 14, 16 inch ones. Okay, another layout tool is a marking gauge. Now, I have a couple of these lying around the shop. So what I could do is I could adjust these for um, my layouts. If I want to do dovetails, if I want to do mortises, or even if I'm going to do a rabbit, I can adjust this to a specific depth. Let's say I want to do this for one inch. I take it to the one inch mark on my ruler, 
I tighten this down, and then I can come across like this and use this and score a line as I come across, and that is going to give me a even one inch reference line from the edge of my board all the way across to here. So this is a really good tool for laying out a very cons uh, concise, long line. If you're going to do dovetails, uh, mortise and tendon joints, even a long rabbit, you could use this, okay? So that's a marking gauge. This is another marking gauge that I have lying around the shop, okay? And same thing, same principle, where I'm going to come in and I'm going to adjust this to two inches. I'm going to tighten this down. And there again, And again, I'm going to come and I'm going to mark, uh, use my reference edge and I'm going to use this to score a line all the way across like this as I want to lay out. Now, what's making the mark is this has a very sharp needle point inside and you reference from the edge of this point to the brass plate that's here and that will give you your distance for your reference line when you do your layout. So I don't always use a pencil whenever I do my layouts. Um, if I want something that's very precise, I use what we call a marking knife. They actually have a right hand and a left hand marking knife. Um, this is maybe $15 to $18. They're readily available online from Lee Valley or Lee Nielsen or you can even pick them up at Rockwood. So what's nice about it is, I can lay this across my material, make my uh, measured uh, reference, and I can put my knife right down on that point. I could move my square up to that point and come across and score the line. And what I'm doing is I'm lightly cutting the fibers of the wood, and that gives me a good reference point to start my saw cut, to uh, use my chisel to start a definitive point for my joint, or even along my rabbit, it gives me a good point as I go across. Okay, so a marking knife. This is actually a right-hand marking knife. Okay. So we talked about squares. I have a kit of squares here from a company called iGage. I got mine from uh, chipsfly.com. So it comes a, in a 12 inch adjustable scale. And I could come across this way, or I could come across this way. And it gives me a good reference. So if I had a mark here and I needed to carry this all the way down, I could use this longer rule to go down the full length of the material. What's nice about this set is they have adjustable um, heads. So you could take the same 12 inch rule and you could put it on this protractor head and you could get a specific angle that wasn't a 30 or a 45 or a 60 degree. Let's say I had to do a 47 degree angle. I could put this on this head and adjust it to where this could be a 47 or a 50 degree angle, and I could get my reference line all the way laid out at a very concise angle as it went up against my reference of the edge of the material. What if I needed to find the center of a something round? I could use the very same concept. I could slide the rule in here. I 
and I could lay out my um, or a center finder. Yeah, I don't know what this up. So you get the point. So if I had something round, I could lay this out and I could use the rule that would slide parallel here and I could mark my center of my object, of my round object that I wanted to maybe drill a hole in the very center. I could use this as I go around. Okay, again, if I wanted to draw a specific angle, this is a tool that I've had for about over 20 years. It's it called an anchor gauge, and they incrementally go by one degree increments up here or five degree increments here. And I could lay this up against my reference edge, and I could find a pinpoint uh, angle right here. And once I found my angle, I could come in with a pencil and I could draw my reference point right here. And then I would go from there to there on my two lines to mark. And then I could take a ruler and draw those lines and have a very specific angle for my layout that I needed. So these are the squares, the, we call them engineer squares, that we have here at the shop. I like them because they're really heavy duty and they, they, uh, they get easy reference line as you go across like this. Uh, they have a, we have a four inch, a six inch, and an eight inch here at the shop. Uh, okay. So we don't always draw straight or angled curves. Sometimes we draw arcs, okay? So would you do that? I, again, I bought this at Hobby Lobby for like $12. I bought a compass set. So this compass will give you up to like a six inch radius. And then they have accessories that you can attach to the side here to extend that out to 12 inches. So if I wanted to draw an arc, let's say I wanted to draw a one inch arc. I could go from my corner, lay out, lay out my one inch mark, which I've done ahead of time. So this is going to one inch from here to here is one inch. I'm going to go in the corner of this board. I'm going to draw a one inch mark here. I'm going to draw a one inch mark here. Then I'm going to come up and I'm going to go mark here, mark here, and that's going to be the center point of my radius for my circle. And then I just put my compass point there and draw it just like this. Okay. And that would give me a really nice radius on a cutting board or something that I want to soften the edge with. Again, these are really easy to adjust and they fit into your pocket nicely as you're doing your layout work. Let's see. What if we have a larger radius that we have to draw? Now, this is called a beam compass. Okay. So these come with various lengths of material. And on this compass, you can get up to a 36 inch radius. Um, they're easy to adjust. You have one fixed point that you have from the radius point, and it has a lead here that you can go around and you could draw a very large arc with this. It has an extension bar with this. I actually got this at the Swap Meet for $15. Great sale. 
That's why you really need to go to the old tool swap meet and look for guys that are getting rid of stuff. You can find great markets like this. Um, this a, a new tool like this would be $100, $125. And I got it for 10% of that at the swap meet. Okay. Um, what if I am now laying out more complex joinery? And I want to start laying out some dovetails. Well, you're going to have to work on your spacing, and you want the spacing to be even as I go along. So this is a basic pair of dividers, and it adjusts just like a compass. You can go wider or narrower, and you can start at one edge and make a reference point. Make a reference point, and you can evenly space something out. So when you do your layout or your dovetails, they would all be evenly spaced all the all the way across. I just happen to bring some dovetail layout tools. So if I was going to do my lay my dovetail, I would want to maybe come to this point, lay this layout line here, and then come over and lay out this line here. So what does that really tell me? Well, that is the start of your layout for your dovetail. Your pins on one side, your tails on the other side, and by doing the dividers, you know that that spacing in between each one it's going to be consistent, and when we go to cut our dovetail, they will all fit together very nicely. Again, just a simple set of dividers to a long way. Now, what if I, coming back to my circle, what if I need to make a center point punch, and I want to lay something out for, uh, I'm going to drill a hole. So once I have my point that I knew I was going to drill my hole, I want to make a good reference starting point. A awl is an excellent tool to go ahead and make a point, and your bread point fit will fit right in that little uh, indentation that you made with your awl. Okay, uh, what if my angle is not Concise like these here. One is a one to six for the softwood, and one is a one to eight for the hardwood. What if I had a, another specific angle that I needed to lay out across my board? This is what we call a bevel gauge, and you can adjust this angle to whatever you want. So I could come here. Maybe I don't want to face me, maybe you face you, okay? So maybe I want to come here and use this to come up with a very specific angle, like this. And I can adjust this by loosening the wing nut, and I can adjust this to make it wherever I want. Lock it in, and then I could come up here, and I can get my very specific angle. Again, it's hard to do this here from this way. I can lay out my angle, whatever angle that I needed to make my joint or whatever I was trying to do. Okay, uh, thickness. So I went to Harbor Freight and I love um, use of my dial calipers. I use them for virtually all my projects. Uh, when I go to measure a thickness of a tenon, uh, did I check my mortise opening to see if it was wide enough for my tenon? Is my tenon too thick? Um, is the thickness of my material uh, too thick or too thin? Did I go too far? These are really easy to reference, the thickness of your material. 
and it's more concise than trying to use a ruler or a uh, tri square. Um, we have regular, like analog type dial bases, which I got Harbor Freight for ten dollars, and you just go and open these up, come and take them up against your surface that you're trying to measure the thickness of, and read the scale, and it'll tell you with thousands of an inch where you're at for reference. These are the analog, and these are the digital ones that we have here at the shop. So it can tell you in a uh, digital readout. And what's nice about the digital ones are um, you can do them in fractions or you can do them in metric measurements. You have the ability to adjust the, uh, uh, the readout that you want. Okay, what if I make a rabbit or a hole and I wanted to check the depth of that hole? Well, there's two ways I could do it. I could use my dial calipers and I could actually place it in the hole. And I could go down to it hits the bottom of the hole. And then I could come over and see that the from the surface to the bottom of the hole is this distance. And then I could use this readout to tell me exactly how deep the hole was. That's one way. Hey Doug. Yes. I've got a question here from uh, Jan. I'm gonna unmute her. Okay. Oh, yes, um, I was just wondering if you could please repeat the name of each of the tools. I have a lot of trouble understanding this distortion and audio. So the name of your tool that you progress, if you could just repeat the name a couple of times. Sure, sure. I would appreciate that. Thank you. Yes. So this tool that I'm going to use here is called the depth gauge. Okay. So if I wanted to measure the depth of my hole that I just drilled, I would loosen this, take this down until it reached the bottom of my hole, come back and tighten this, okay? And this is a conventional ruler, and this would tell me that the depth of my hole was one and an eighth of an inch deep. The camera's over here. Okay, so this is a depth gauge. Okay? This was another way to measure the depth is a dial caliper. Okay, and so I've covered all my measuring and layout tools. Uh, does anybody have any questions or comments on the tools that we use for layout and measuring? Come on, where's the peanut gallery at here? <laughs> no one so far. Okay, I must have bored you to death then. Just ask them if they have any measuring tools they use that are not. I'm sorry? Ask them if they have any measuring tools that they use that you didn't cover. Okay, great question. So Dallas asked the question, do you have any measuring tools that you like to use in your shop that we didn't cover here today. I'd love to talk about it. Paul probably has some. Do you use a, measure, a moisture tester for wood at all when you're working? I'm, I'm sorry, say that again? Do you test for moisture when you're doing accurate work on the wood? Oh, moisture? Yes. Yeah, I did not bring a moisture meter. That is uh, obviously a big thing uh, to measure the moisture in the wood, to understand if you're working with still wet wood at a 10 to 12%, or if you're working with good kiln drying wood or air dry wood in the 4 to 6%. We have a at the shop, yeah. And we have a moisture meter here at the shop that you can, uh, you can utilize also. Great point, Paul, because uh, if it's still wet wood and you cut it and it dries, it's going to shrink. Good point. Any other questions or other tools that you like to use in your shop for measuring the layout? 
How about talking about mitre boards for a moment? Mitre boxes, mitre boxes, which are so convenient sometimes. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Do you, do you use a mitre box from time to time for accuracy? Yes. So that is uh, kind of a whole different topic as far as cutting joinery with a mitre joint, a mitre box using. Um, to make a miter joint. Uh, we just use these tools to lay out a miter, but we definitely use a miter box to cut an accurate miter joint. Yes. Great point. Thank you. Paul's got his hand up. Yes, Paul. Hi. Um, I just wanted to sh see if I can show off this little marking knife that I just bought recently. And I'm a convert. Uh, I find that when I, when I use the marking knife, I can, uh, even just using the bandsaw, I, I, somehow I can do it far more accurately than if I use a pencil. And uh, for marking out things like uh, mortise and tenons and so on, I don't know if I'm ever gonna use a pencil again for the actual cut lines. Exactly, great point. Great point, Paul, thank you. And uh, what I like about it is it scores the wood to give you a great reference point. So when you do make a cut on the bandsaw, it's much easier to see and it's actually more precise. I'm not sure everybody understands why a marking knife is different than a regular knife. Okay, great point. So I'm gonna move up here and I'm gonna try to bring this up to the camera as much as I can. So the marking knife is got a 60 degree bevel on it. It has a flat surface on one side and a uh, cut or a shape just like you would a plain iron on the other side. And it comes to a very fine point and it's very easy to reference this flat side against your ruler and bring this across like this, and you're actually scoring the wood just like you would on a uh, uh, chisel. So instead of using a chisel to make a score line, you could use the marking knife to make a much more efficient, much more rapid, more rapid cut. Sorry if I stopped, we had an 18 going across. Okay, any other questions about the layout tools that we've talked about today? Okay, I'm here. I have a quick question. Yes. We uh, have space on your right, by your right hand. By your right hand, the, the black, the black, all the way to the end of the table. The black. The black uh, spacers, those, yes. What are those? These are called are those dovetail again? layout tools. So when you do, when you lay out the dovetail tool, okay? So I'm gonna demonstrate this again. So I lay this out here and I go here and then I come over here to the opposite side. And okay. I lay out my dovetail with this dovetail layout. I don't have to rely on this. These are called dovetail saddles and they're much more accurate as you go to you use your uh, reference for your angles for your dovetails. Right, okay. Did I thank answer you. your question, Jen? I'm good. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Great question, thank you. Anybody else have any questions about the tools? Uh, I'm sure you have a better collection than myself. Sorry, more of a statement. Can you hear me? This is Paul Shankin. Hey, Paul. Yeah, uh, the digital protractor that's on the wall there, 
uh, was extremely useful for splitting angles and then divide by two to get the intersecting angle um, yeah. instead of so, hitting well, what this. I'm about is I have a, just a small angle bevel gauge uh, that I could use to lay out angles. Here at the shop, we have a, an electronic digital protractor that can give you a very defined angle, and it's got a longer handle on it. You could lay out more of a line. Great point, Paul. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay, if no other questions, we'll uh, see you at next week's uh, hand tool session. Uh, next week, we're going to go over how to square up a board. We call it five sides. So we're going to go over how to chew up all the edges. So we're going to go over how to true up and make square all four sides plus the top to make an even uh, board to give yourself a good reference. So when you go to do your layout for your measurements or your marking, everything is square from the very start. So we'll go over that next week, next Wednesday. And if anybody has any topics they would like to see as we go along, I'm more than willing to come in every Wednesday and go over a topic that everybody would like to cover if I even know what you're talking about. <laughs> hey, Doug, this is, a, this is Travis. I had a, just a suggestion for you. Um, this topic would have been phenomenal for all those people who've gone through the intro class in okay. the last year. And I'll bet we have a mailing list somewhere to get to all those folks. And especially since I've had two people ask me about squaring up boards, yeah, and they were both in the intro classes. I think that that would be a great way to really increase uh, the engagement and the number of participants. Because this is the first one of your sessions that I've had the opportunity to sit through. And man, it's just great fundamentals. So this is the kind of thing that newbies should really know about so that they can take advantage of it. Um, so if we have those lists, and if we have any other way of identifying new to woodworking, I mean, on the one hand, when someone has taken the intro class, they're self-identifying as new to woodworking. But maybe when join the shop. I, uh, Travis, this is Gary. I, we not only notified them, but I sent out a reminder this afternoon to every member of the last two classes, which is 20 people. I don't see one of them on here. So um, as, as logical as that is, and as good as it would be for them, and as disappointed as I am they're not here, I, I don't know what the answer is. Check your outbox. <laughs> Hi, this is Jan. Yes, Jan. Yeah. Um, yeah, I like that. I'm a, a newbie, and I like the idea of some, like, some kind of a paper or something that I can hold on to, you know, names of the tools or you know, like a handout if that's without making extra work, maybe you have that reference from the year past. Okay. And maybe it, before you tonight, you could send it out to those of us that want to link to a handout, maybe? Sure. I can that work it out possible? For you. That'd be cool. I can work it out for you for follow-up sessions. Hey, Doug, one more thing. I have to tell you, for me, there was a, a high point when you actually had the tool up close to the camera. You know the scoring blade that you put up there? Yeah. All of a sudden, it was so clear exactly what you were talking about. At a distance with the quality of video that we have, it's kind of hard to appreciate each of the tools. When you had that one knife up close to the camera, wow, that made a big difference. And I don't know if you guys have two cameras going right now, but there seems to be a, an echo or a feedback loop going. If you have two uh, set up right now, you need we to... Don't. Do you or do you not? We do not. We do not. I wonder where that echo is coming from. Okay, um, all right, thank you. Uh, but seeing the, the tool up close was great. Thank you. 
Okay, I'll work on that for next time for uh, more close-ups. So, uh, Travis, uh, it's uh, it's Ravi De Silva. Um, one of the things that that kind of goes along with what you're saying might also be that having the camera closer might prevent some of the echo. I suspect it's probably due to like the size of the wood shop and the and the way that things uh, kind of bounce off the walls there. So if you if it is possible to to move the camera closer and to sort of focus in on how you're using the tools in relation to the wood, uh, that'll also get you closer to the mic. And if anybody needs one, um, I have like a, a shotgun mic that you can attach to the camera too that, that would allow you to at least pick up the audio potentially a little bit better and more directional space in, in some of these environments. Okay, excellent. I think maybe what I might try to do next week is set the camera on the corner of the workbench and then come to the opposite end so maybe we could get a little closer because I am going to be working a lot with the vice. So maybe if we set the camera over here in the corner of the bench, we could get a better uh, representation of what I'm doing uh, closer up. I'll try that for next week. Thank you. Hey, this is this is Rob. Hey, Paul, Paul did his presentation on sharpening, uh, you know, the card scraper the other day. And he didn't have nearly the echo or the challenge that you're having. Was somebody in the room with him? Is the setup the same, or have we changed something? I'm just curious if that, because that, that seems I set up both of them and I did it identically. Okay, that's, okay. It's the same camera, same computer, everything. I'm not sure why we got echo. It's just me. I'm just too darn loud. Hey, hey Doug. Doug, this is Jan. Yes, Jan. Hi. Yes, um, I was wondering, what about a microphone that you actually clip onto your shirt so it's right by your mouth with rather than on the camera, then directly into a mic, so another thought. And then while I have you, uh, it was great. This is my first, yeah, this is what's great. I mean, I enjoyed this. Um, we can't be at the shop, but we can, we're there in, in your know, body and soul, you know, mind and soul. So thank you for doing this. Yes, yeah. ma'am. Glad to do it. I uh, I missed my shop apron. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, that was a microphone tip to you. Okay. It might be less distortion. Thank you for the suggestion. Yeah. Maybe we can find a wireless mic somehow. We have this up with us. Yeah. We have the same problem with Paul. Okay. As we go through this, we have a learning curve for all of us. So please bear with us as we work on a, a better technical solution for what we're trying to do. Hello, Doug. Doug, yeah. this is Kevin. I was another one of those newbies from January. I just wanted to second that this has been great as far as picking up on new tools and all this. I'm starting to see all the things I want to get and purchase in the future. Because Great. If you want to spend money, I can help you with that. Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> But Thank you again. If you have an idea of what uh, you can start with, start with the simple tools first that you can get locally. And then when the old tool slot comes back, then you can look to expand your, uh, your inventory of uh, layout tools. It's really important to have good layout tools because the accuracy will carry through on your entire project. Anything else? Well, thank you folks for joining me tonight. Uh, I hope you learned something and um, we look forward to seeing you all in the following webinars. The very next webinar we have is actually Friday morning at 10 o'clock. It's for the holiday gift sale webinar and we're gonna, Dan Godda is going to host that and he's going to talk about all the different categories we have coming up for the holiday gift sale and how you can help in each one of the categories and give everyone a chance to kind of see what they've been making since they've been sequestered for the last three or four weeks and uh, kind of get an idea of what everybody's doing uh, for the holiday gift sale. It's been a great two years uh, that we've had in the last two years and we really want to make this next one uh, the best one we've had is uh, 
that would be my swan song as I go out the door and uh, pass the baton on to someone else. Thank you, Doug. Very Travis is dismay. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> <Travis> too, of <laughs> okay, guys, thank you. Thank, thank you very you. much. Appreciate it, Doug. Thank you.